So I've been wanting to come back to software ring for a long time now. I have been playing this game for four or five years now. And at this point I thought, why not come back to it for the first time in a while? And they have been updating this game in insane amounts and I'm just pumped to get back into it. We're gonna hop into hard mode this time. And hard mode is what I think is gonna be, is probably harder than what it usually is, which I usually play a normal. Um, I think the biggest thing is going to be is usually in medium, you start with, you start with $25,000 in hard mode. You start with 10. We're going to take out a $10,000 just to keep it. And one thing I wanted to mention is you have a major effect on how things go. So with this, when you put it on hard mode, the impact on sales by creativity is really high. So. What that means is if you don't have a creative designer to design the product and set everything up and get the team going on the right direction, it will have a major impact on your sales and you'll suffer. You'll suffer tremendously in trying to sell that product and you'll have to remake it again and again and again with a better designer in order to, well, make good sales and keep going forward. So we're going to start off in the garage just because it's going to be the cheapest option we can do. So there's not much room here, which kind of sucks, but it's definitely where we're going to start just because we're broke and we have $20,000 with 10,000 of it being on a loan. We're going to pause the game. We're going to go into build mode and we're going to try to make this as cheap as possible. We're going to run out of money very quickly. So we're going to try to avoid that. So I'm just going to put five desks here. We only have three of us, so we can leave a guest desk. So one, two, and three. And then for chairs, I can grab the standard office chair. We'll go cheap just because we need to. It's nothing too pretty. It's not the com most comfortable thing. But if you haven't played software Inc. before, the founders don't have very much need. So you really don't have to give them much when in terms of comfort and things like that. Obviously, these guys want something to be more, um, more decorated. So it's a little bit nicer. But I think the two lights will suffice with electricity. Sorry, with lighting. <laughs> it's not the lightest, so we're going to throw in some paintings. And that way, I'm going to put a painting there. I'm going to put a painting here. And just like that, they'll have something there to keep them occupied. So I went ahead and put some paintings down just to raise the level of decoration. If the level of decoration is low, they won't be happy. Right now, it's at 176% for a boost. You, I th think it's 200 where it maxes out the last time, if I remembered correctly. I'm going to get a desk plant, put that there. It goes to 200. Right now, that's enough decoration. The room's not too ugly for them to be upset. So, so far, we've already spent almost $6,000, which isn't the best. So, we're going to speed up. We're going to bring everybody in. I think they come in at 8 o'clock, I believe. Yep, there they are. So I'm going to pause it right there again before we waste the whole day. So we're looking at day one of January 1980 and what we need to look at is being careful about what we work on so we don't bleed money. What we're going to do is we're going to take on some contract work. Contract work will bring in basic income. We can get done in a couple of days and it brings in enough money for us to start working on our own product. So we're going to work on a logistics system. I'm going to take that on and accept that and quickly when they come in we have two days to finish this so one day at the end of the day today will be one day end of the day tomorrow will be the next day so what that is is pretty much a month so usually when you make your own stuff you want to go through four iterations in order to get the best design the best quality and the best ideas going for your for your um for your products when you're making stuff for somebody else like when a contract you really only have to go through um the second iteration once you get to the third you can pretty much develop it the reason and that's pretty much for the early on phases down the road you can go super advanced and make it better coding this blue line tells you where you got to go once you get to that blue line that's it that's that's as further as you got to go so right there i can technically finish it i'll get paid and it'll be pretty great quality so i'm going to take on a couple more projects i'm going to take on the two game assets accept that work and we're going to speed up time a little bit we're going to speed up time get through the next day or two and hopefully start making some sort of money here. Right now we're at $21,000. 
watch right here at the end of the day we're going to see how much money we're losing we're obviously paying interest on a loan we're paying back our loan and luckily we don't have any employees to pay but we are paying bills we have el el electrical costs i'm pretty sure and we have um other bills to pay so right here obviously it says we made twenty thousand dollars but in reality we didn't it's just saying that because the game started but you can see how much we spent on construction we spent fifty six hundred dollars on construction that's not good. That's a lot of money gone to waste. I'm going to go ahead and release that. And both of these are to already there. I'm going to promote those to beta. Correction alpha. Get these coded up. That's already there. That's already there. I can finish and finish. And both, all three of those were outstanding quality. And with that, it helps our business reputation. The better you do for business reputation, the better deals you get down the road. So it says, this is your reputation in the software industry. Each star affects the quality of employee applicants. So pretty much if you have a piss poor reputation, the quality of employees that you're going to get is pretty low. People don't want to work for a company that doesn't take care of their employees, for instance, that doesn't have a good reputation within the business community. So you got to really stay on top of that. Um, down the road, it doesn't really matter once you're a big company, but at first you want to focus on it a bit. Um, each star affects the quality of every employee, of course. Um, it also affects contracts and deals and how many subsidiaries you can. So you can own subsidiaries. Pretty much you can invest in different companies in this game. And with that, you can technically buy out as many companies as you want to, as long as you have the money for it. But I don't like to do it. Game, game gets kind of boring when you own everything. So while waiting for the next day, I'm going to call a quick cleaning person. The cleaning person will come in up the property i'll pay them and it's going to keep our employees happy especially since we set them up as being kind of neat freaks um it's going to keep them happy so we're going to go ahead and go to the next day before we accept our next contracts and go from there so now we're in february what we're going to do in february is do the same thing i know it's not it's not anything too exciting yet but it's the way we kind of have to start in order to make sure we are in a good position i want to grab an embedded system no, I'm going to grab a game assets and two logistics applications. Logistics applica applications are pretty easy to make. They go the fastest and they and they tend to pay very well. So we're getting we're going to go through. We get at least one iteration done. Well, two is the goal, but we'll see where we are at the end of this day. I still want to leave enough room for coding the next day, and so we don't get behind and release it late. If we release it late, we get bad reviews, and they keep some of the money. And we kind of need some of this. We kind of need the money. We kind of need all the money we can get. I'm going to go ahead and develop all of these into alpha. Start the coding process. Um, get things coded up. Looks like they're already kind of at the point where they got to be. I'm going to do some bug fixes. Do we even need to? No. We're not even going to do bug fixes. We're going to go ahead and release those. Pretty more outstanding. We're at $60,000 already. That's outstanding. And $60,000 may seem like a lot in the three months, two months we've been open. But... The issue with that comes is when you start hiring staff, seventy thousand dollars. Well, you know, eventually you're spending millions of dollars per month. So if you're not prepared for it, you kind of leave yourself in a world of hurt. You can't afford to pay your staff. You can't afford to pay, you know, the 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 I guess the remedial staff, your cleaners, your maintenance, IT receptionists, couriers, cooks, and security. Um, Security gets important because you can get robbed. <laughs> it's the worst feeling ever because it is expensive to replace all of your items. So at the end of March, I want to start working towards our own um, product. However, we're going to have an issue where Captain Gridlock here, he's a bit of a, he, he hates people. We'll put it like that. He likes to have his own office. Um, one of his demands as a, design, as a lead designer is he wants to have his own office. So what we're going to do, keep it very easy. We're going to highlight all of his things. Oh, by shift clicking. There we go. We're going to right click. We're going to move furniture and we're going to place this in this little room. So we're paying extra rent. Just so this guy stop complaining if we're being honest. So with this, he's going to need his own light and I'm going to put a painting a bit more design in there. And I want to get a couple of rugs. It makes it feel more alive and it kind of looks less like looks less like a warehouse than what it currently does. So I'm definitely going to do that. I'm going to get a bookshelf, start increasing kind of a bit how the aesthetics look of it. It's kind of dreary right now and, and I want to get away from that. So we got a bookshelf. I want to get a water cooler. Bam. Just like that. We got a water cooler and that should keep everybody happy for now. Um, 
So right now we're not working on anything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to speed up the day, get through the rest of this day so we can have a full day to work tomorrow. And we're going to start designing our very first product. Um, we're going to start probably with an antivirus. Antiviruses seem to perform mostly decent. If you can see right here, we lost money because we didn't work on any contracts. Lost 1700 bucks on maintenance. Pretty much just bills and basic construction. So some of these different items I put down cost us some money. I'm going to call another cleaner. Don't forget. I'm going to call IT. I'm going to call maintenance. Make sure everything's being kept up with. Um, uh, going to go into the develop software portion. We're going to develop an antivirus and start with an antivirus. So when we get to the screen, we have to focus on a couple of things. You have to look at the size of your team and what it recommends. You also need to look at expected interest. If the interest is low, there's a decent chance you're not going to get many sales. So you got to start adding different things to your and to, to your product. So we can start with file encryption. We can add a file scanner, anti-theft, and application scanner. With that, we already have an interest of 100%. Wasted interest is 18. We can obviously play around with these different numbers and remove certain things like that. And we can even folk and we can even lower the wasted interest. So I'm going to go ahead and go with file encryption, anti-theft, application scanner, and file quarantine. What is file quarantine? It doesn't tell you. Um, Kind of go with it. So we need a name. I'm not sure what we should call our antivirus. I have a name. We're calling it virus gridlock because antivirus gridlocks the virus, I guess. I don't know. It's cheesy, I know. But we're going to lower the price. They recommend $70. going to go $65. Nobody knows who we are. I don't want to go too crazy with it. We're definitely going to need a publisher. Well, maybe. Hold on. We'll look at our different options. We'll continue through the different settings here. And I'm going to go with an existing framework. We're going to select a framework. And what frameworks do is they can help you produce your products way quicker than what you can do. So right here, um, we got to find one that kind of suits what we can do, what we're looking for. So right there, that one has file quarantine. They have old tech levels. But what this does when you choose one is it lowers how long it takes usually. With that one, it's not really it's not really doing it. So I'm gonna remove that and up our tech level. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, but they can come in handy when you're working on a big project, especially when it comes down to games or OSs and things like that. You can work on current on frameworks that already exist. Use that to you pretty much take part of their coding and integrate it into your system. You have to pay obviously a percentage for royalty to use our stuff, but it helps you keep up with um, meeting your deadlines, which come, come rather quickly than, than quicker than you would expect. But so we're going to keep moving forward. We need a 2D editor. 2D editor, I want to go by release. Level 76 is what we need. Active users is 427,000. If you go with something that's more active users, it's great quality and unavoidable. That means it's it's, it's a very good product. So you're going to get get better quality with that. You're going to pay a royalty to use this stuff, of course. Um, but you're going to have to look at operating systems. You can, I always filter by active users. Take the top four, top five. Oh, not definitely not that. There we go. So we're going to auto balance usually balances that you can sit here and mess with these numbers and all these different things. See if you can save some more interest and things like that. Just hit the auto auto balance. It does the job for you. So I need a publisher. I for sure cannot handle the publishing. So a publisher sets a deadline, but they take care of your marketing. They take care of your printing or funding. They'll give you funding. They'll even grant, they'll even give you money. I can get $25,000, but it has to release by June of 1981. So you can see here how quickly you could, they take a lot of your royalties. So based on our products, they'll be taking 28.8% of our sales. It sounds like a lot, but we definitely can't keep up with printing. We don't have anything to print with, and we don't have any marketers. We don't have a marketing team, so there's no way for us to keep up with. So we're going to get a publisher. We have a year and a month to get this out and we're going to develop it. Now, 
we're gonna hope we have enough money to keep paying the bills right because we have to pay our bills if we can't afford our bills while we're doing this we're gonna go bankrupt and the game's in it it's gonna end so we're gonna have to keep working on contracts while we work on stuff i'm gonna get a couple more logistics application we've seen that we can work on a couple at a time i'm gonna accept those i'm going to prioritize the logistics application that way we get those done first and before we focus on our own our uh, classic virus gridlock oh sh should probably find a better name for that but i don't think we're going to finish the iterative two okay we finished two iterations before i said that we're going to develop this develop this get them both into alpha start getting some of the code done once we get the code done right there promote it into beta release it promote it into beta and we're going to release it for outstanding quality fifteen thousand dollars so we're going to keep making money this way and be able to pay our bills while we keep on working on this new product. So I'm looking at this and I'm wondering if we should hire a new employee or not, or if we should not. Um, calling cleaning is kind of getting annoying. So I'm considering even hiring a cleaner, but... Considering we don't have any steady income and it's a thousand dollars a month, I'm just gonna call. I'm gonna call IT. I'm gonna call maintenance just to get it going. Here's where it kind of gets concerning. I obviously want to get all, you know, all four of the iterations, but we have a year and a month, a year and a month to get this out. But we have to go through the four iterations. We have to go through the through the alpha phase where they're coding it, and we got to go through beta where they're bug fixing things. So I'm considering hiring an employee. Um, I might. I'm considering hiring another employee. And the reason why is if we're working on contracts, we don't really have to worry about paying them out of pocket. The contracts will keep on paying them and we'll keep on making money. So um, we're for now, we'll just keep on going and see if it can keep up. If I regret it, then I regret it. Hopefully we don't, <laughs> that'd be kind of a disaster. But for now, looks like things are going pretty smoothly. Now we're gonna keep on going, keep on, keep on chugging, chugging, trucking. I'm I'm not even sure what word I was going there. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna keep working on stuff. So we have a year to get through this. So we're going to keep on working on contracts, make sure we're still making enough money to keep paying our bills. The moment we stop paying our bills is kind of we're in trouble, but probably should have accepted that later in the day. I'll still, I'll still have a day after this. Okay. We already got a $4,000 upfront fee, which is really nice. It helps pay off a couple of our bills. We even make money. We made $280 last month. So you can already see how if we're not doing these contracts, we're, we're going to start bleeding money. We're in a third iteration, going to develop those. Going to promote that. Promote that. Finish and finish. Outstanding quality. We made enough money to pay the bills. And we even made a profit. We're up $12,000 this month. We're going to keep on going. We have until June of 1980 to get this product out. Actually, June of 1981 to get this product out. So I think we'll be able to do it. When I look at the, the economic simulation of this game, it kind of makes me think about of City Skylines 2, which comes out in like six days from when I'm recording the video. So that makes me kind of really excited. Um, e the economy is supposed to be like super way more in depth than City Skylines 1's was. So I'm looking forward to kind of going more in depth with the simulation and having to worry about different aspects of taxing. Oh, I did not mean to hire somebody to hire them. You know, in um, managing different, you know, income tiers. So I believe it's by education. You can tax people by education there. So in City Skylines 1, there's just a residential for low density residential and high density residential. And you can only really tax them to a certain amount and they get pissed off. City Skylines 2, obviously they'll get mad with high taxes. However, you can tax them at different rates. Obviously, un the uneducated will make less money on average than the, you know, very educated. You have to really play, the f play a fine tool there. And it kind of reminds me because of this game, if you're not playing your finances very carefully, you're kind of, you're going to end up in a weird place where your company can go into bankruptcy and 
any work you've put in kind of goes to waste because you're completely broke. So it looks like we're going for a June 1981 release. Um, one thing I want to start looking into, we'll, we'll keep time from time rolling, is looking into what's what's releasing in June. So it looks like we're releasing in June and there's an antivirus releasing in September. So if these people are known by WinPress LLC, when Peset, Peset, whatever it is, Malware Alarm 2, when they release, if they're more popular than us and we didn't make a significant impact on the market when we released, in those three months of being out, they can kill our sales immediately because we're not really known in that market. The more you're known in these markets, the better off you perform when you release, which, of you know, of course, makes you end up with more money. So our first release, honestly, might flunk. We might, <laughs> there's a decent chance we might lose some money, but it's kind of a risk you have to take, kind of how the game works. We're going to accept two more logistics, app logistics application, keep on making money, and uh, we're going to see where we're at. So let's get through these. We've got two days left on these. I'm sure we'll get get, get them out just in time just that we have previously. Yeah, we're going to three o'clock and um, that should be plenty of time. So we're already through our first two iterations. We're going to iteration three. Once we finish iteration three, it'll go to four. Hopefully we can finish four or get through most of it before we go through alpha. Um, we have to give it time to code, which probably takes a couple months and everything else. So I'm going to develop these. Get these out quickly. Ooh. Okay, they're due today. I had time. I had time. I was freaking out for no reason. So we made some more money. Keep our balance up before we go completely in debt. We still have $9,348 in loans. We don't have to worry about it. We're bringing in money. We have $73,000. We're, we're going to be just fine. Things are getting messy again. Going to call cleaning. Going to call IT and make sure everything is working and nice and clean. Um, if you don't meet their needs that we set up at the beginning, they tend to work at lower quality rates and they produce less quality work and they work slower and... They want to slack off more. So you want to keep up with their needs. Um, can't treat them like slaves. It's not how that works. You know, they're humans. They have needs and you got to take care of them. Um, sometimes I'm kind of aggressive and I'll kind of mess with their vacation time and pay them less for things like that to save money. If I'm going bankrupt and things like that with the bigger company. But usually I try to go for a liberal treatment of my, of the, the employees. Um, so hopefully we have six months left. We're on iteration four. We're going to have to move on to the next part of the design. If not, we're going to get stuck. So what I'm going to do at the end of December, which is now, I'm going to put this into alpha. Let's start coding this up. Let's start getting this ready for beta. we got to get ready for bug testing so we can be ready for release in June of 81. We're, you know, six months away. And if we're not prepared, it's going to be kind of a mess. So hopefully we can get it coded in the next few months and get, still get up a few months for bug fixing, which is one thing when we, when we release, hopefully we haven't, hopefully we're able to keep up with the support and, um, the updates. So with old city skylines, bug fixes were done kind of by the support team. They would, you'd have to have programmers and support agents on one team in order for them to take the calls and fix the bugs. Now, the way it works is you kind of have to have separate team. I mean, technically, yes, you can keep your bug fixers on the support team, but it's a bit smoother if you put them on like a separate post launch team is what I usually call them. And what that can do is you have to update your products. So if you release an antivirus and it's full of bugs or it's super outdated, the tech levels are just behind, you got to keep updating it in order for it to stay relevant on the market. If you fail to do that, you lose customers and people don't like broken products. So you got to just make sure you're keeping up with it. Right now we're struggling. Right. In chance, <laughs> you might not finish all the coding. That's why I'm kind of thinking about hiring a new employee. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to hire an employee. So we don't, we, we need a programmer. And secondary role, maybe a designer, I guess. We'll go with a medium salary. Um, we definitely need compatibility. Specialization. We need system and 2D. And I don't like doing by trait, but I really need some good people. I hate silent. I hate breaks the computer. And I hate silent but deadly. Kind of makes things a bit of a pain in the butt. So we're going to filter. Looks like we have this person here, Emma Gonzalez. She's 40 years old. 
Um, she gets stressed easy. And she's a slower eater, which isn't the end of the world. She's pretty good at programming. She's a great, she's a great, sure, she's a great programmer and a pretty good designer. So we're gonna hire her onto the core team. You have limited funds. Yes, we'll hire her. We'll hire her. We should be fine for release. If we're not, then what did I spend? Eleven. Okay, the hiring cost eleven thousand dollars. That makes sense. So, oh. Employee's not even working. Let's get, get that going here. So, immediately, I'm supposed to assign the office, but you kind of already knew that this is office. So, I'm going to go in here. going to right-click and assign it to furniture. Assign the furniture and assign it to Captain Gridlock. Has an office. Nobody else will go in there. Uh, we're going to keep going. If we, if we run out of money, we can just always do a contract or two. No problema. I'm not worried. I'm not worried yet. I say I'm not worried, but there's been times I've completely just forgotten about my finances and just obliterated everything and <laughs> had to restart. So hopefully we don't do that here. We're already in March, day two of March. So we're going to end up in April and we still have 20% of the coding left. I'm hoping you paid 11. Oh, Texas came in. Okay. So my accountants were working on Texas, apparently. I guess Captain Gridlock was working on taxes. He's the only one who can work on taxes. But if you don't pay your taxes in time, like if they don't finish the report because you don't have enough of a team, um, you, you get fined a bunch of money for being late for your taxes. Um, we're already at the end of April. I want to get at least a month of coding in. So I'm hoping by the end of today, please, we can have this coding done. 99? Can we get 200? No, next day. It's okay. Oh. Wow. I said we're not going to do what I didn't want to do, and here we are doing it. So we're going to accept game asset. We're going to accept some of that. We're going to accept the work. We're going to prioritize that. We're going to make some money today. We're going to come back into the positives, and we're going to be completely fine. So hopefully... Hopefully, we can get through the iteration of a couple of these. We got two days left on these to release, so it's not—it's not the end of the world. But I'm pretty sure we have to release something in order to, I guess, be out of the bankruptcy. So, bankruptcy in one day, 17 hours. That means I have the rest of today to get out of bankruptcy. If not, we're kind of in the red. So, oh, we're already out of bankruptcy. So we're gonna promote this and we're gonna release it. Outstanding, satisfactory quality. We we made six thousand dollars, and that's kind of all that matters. <laughs> we're we're not gonna go bankrupt. We're we're completely fine. We're already in. Okay, we're gonna start. We're gonna promote this into beta. Start working on bugs, and how? Oh. Oh, wow. Can I, is there an autosave? Hold on. Load. Okay. We're going to pretend that didn't happen. And we are going to take out a bit of a loan. So we're going to go into, where is it? Is it, I think it's finances. No. Insurance and investments. No. Where do you take out loans? I know there was a tab for that kind of thing here. Loans, there it is. So we're going to take out what's quick loan or bank loan. What's the difference? Okay. We definitely don't want that much. We're going to take out $10,000. We'll pay it off over the year. That's fine. Okay. Okay. We're releasing less than quality things, but we will at least be able to not go bankrupt this time. <laughs> I honestly, stop paying attention to finances, if I'm being honest. So hopefully we're able to keep up. What are we spending so much money on? We're spending $6,000 a month on just a person. So we're spending a lot of money on just salaries. So hopefully we can develop this. And I think we're good on finances still. Yeah, we are. Okay. One day overdue. Wow. Okay. At least that. I lost money. Not good. Okay. We're going to release this. 
and right here immediately. So we have literally never heard of Gridlock. The ink would probably be go for antivirus watch firefighter nine, to be honest. So right there is people don't know who we are. So they're not going to buy the product as likely. We only found small issues here and there, and we can tell a lot of work went into it. That's awesome. And they like the quality. So we released it and immediately we can go into updates. So before we even technically release, we can start updating the product to make sure we're up to date on pretty much the tech levels. If you have low tech levels, people aren't gonna buy your product. It's gonna appear old. Oh, wow. 4,000 active users. How much sales did we make? $277,000 in sales. But if you look at royalties, $93,000 in royalties. Distribution, $82,000. So you can already see how expensive these get. We already have a loan. We're paying 600 bucks a month in loans. And dividends. I mean, we're losing $11,000 because of all that. So it's no issue at all. We're going to keep on going. We're going to release this bug fix. Then I make the product even better. We can get to 100. Hopefully. Oh, next month. Okay. Look at that. Immediately, we are bringing in profit. We're almost $100,000 a month in profit, which is absolutely outstanding. We still have to pay taxes on it at the beginning of the year, which nobody likes taxes, but at least we're making a profit. We can say we're a profitable company after I completely took us into bankruptcy, but again, we're not going to talk about that. But because we're not going to talk about that, I think right now is a perfect time to end this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I did. We'll see you guys next time. We'll start working on a couple new products that I have in mind. Hopefully, if, if we get there and don't go bankrupt like I did today. But all for now, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.